Yeah, okay. Um, hello, Sophia Potter, That's who me. is the community relations director for the Rose Arts Festival this year. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks. Glad to be here. I, I've been to the Rose Arts Festival in the past, um, but not since uh, the pandemic. Is yes. this the first year that it's returning or was it around last year? It was around last year. That was actually my first year attending. I'm not a Norwich native, so I didn't get to go to any of the vintage Rose Arts festivals, um, but I attended last year and it was awesome. It was a great time. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the Rose Arts Festival? Yeah, for sure. So it started back in the 60s and 65. Um, it was a local towns guy with some uh, the Norwich, uh, Norwich Area Chamber of Commerce, and they decided to put on a festival. It was a weekend long thing. And actually at one point was a whole week long festival um, just to kind of, you know, be involved in the community, bring people to the, the Rose of New England. And it was a huge success. So they had tons of headliners, the Beach Boys, Earth, Wind and Fire. Um, wow. Stevie Wonder was there. It was really, really great. They had road races. There was a, um, a pageant um, and it just brought a lot of business to the community. A lot of local vendors got more, you know, notoriety. Um, and it went on until 98 um, for a multitude of reasons. I think it ended. I think a large part of that was the casinos were going full swing. So when, you know, headliners were coming to the area, they were going to Foxwoods or Mohegan Sun. Um, and there was a little money issue as well. Um, this is a fully volunteered, um, fundraised, nonprofit thing. So, you know, money is always hard to come by, but it was on hiatus for 19 years. And then... Kelly, um, in 2017, this is Finn, say hi. Hi, Finn. <laughs> um, she decided to bring it back, was looking for um, a reason for the community to get together. So 2017 was the first year it was back um, in modern times. Um, and then, of course, it did have two years off during COVID. Um, and then last year was the first year back after COVID. Um, and it was great. It was the hottest day of the entire summer last year. He was dying. It was it was awful. But we had such a good time. There was a good family area. There was music all day. There were like so many vendors that were like crafts, small town crafts. Authors were there. There was tons of art. It was just a really great way to get to know people from the area that have these these talents and these skills. It was very, very cool. Great food, lots of food trucks. So um, this is the first year that Mary Dam is taking over. Um, I believe Kelly moved to somewhere, New Hampshire, maybe. Um, and we're just looking to to keep it going. I know one of our one of our big hopes is to have it be um, self serving. So eventually, it'll kind of just roll into each year. We'll roll into the next, yeah. And we'll get um, we'll get a full weekend long um, series of events instead of just one day, which we kind of have this year. So hey, Finn. You gotta jump down. Okay, go watch Dino Master. Okay, thank you. So this year, um, the Downtown Events Committee, the Norwich Events Committee, um, has Downtown After Dark on Friday. So Friday night, there's gonna be live music at all the downtown restaurants. And then Saturday all day is the Rose Arts Festival. And then even on Sunday, we have the, um, the Norwich Fireworks. So it's like a full weekend of fun in Norwich, trying wow. to grab people down here. So you said there's going to be some music on Friday night too. That's great. I, yeah, I yeah, it'll. That. Yeah, it's actually really great. I think, um, of course, family friendly is awesome, but there's also you know adult fun after dark. We've Good. got some really great <laughs> restaurants downtown: Strange Brew, Harp and Dragon, these guys um Billy Wilson. So it's it's a good good way to bring people downtown and really you know support the local economy. Absolutely. Is are all the um, schedules uh, posted on the like a Facebook page or something? Yeah, so the Rose Arts Festival Facebook page has um, a whole schedule of the main stage um, series of events as well as all of the local downtown stages for Saturday. So you can basically just go to Facebook and type in Rose Arts Festival, right? Yep. Oh yeah. There's it's got all the information. So there's a ton of stuff going on all day, um, starting with the road race in the morning. There is a one mile fun run for kids five and older, the Ooh. 5K and a 10K. Um, and there are cash prizes, um, you know, breakfast for everybody after the race. 
And all the proceeds from the registration go to the, it's um, the Larry Pont Bryant, I believe is how you say it, um, Athletic Safety Fund, which provides AEDs and like safety equipment to athletic fields and high schools and middle schools in the area, um, which is a great cause. So, I mean, you're not just yeah. running to have fun, you're also supporting, you know, healthy and, and um, worthwhile causes. You know, and that's, and that's the thing as part of the, the Larry Pont Bryant um, Athletic Fund, Athletic Safety Fund is realizing that even if you're in the peak health, you know, you're you're the the, the quarterback or whatever, you there's still risk of of, of injury and, and really serious problems and every second counts. So I think that's a really good, really good cause. I mean, even good. with COVID, it affected people in the best of health and the worst of health, you know? Yes. Yep. Um, so, so I remember last time I went, there was a, a gallery there. Um, is going to be a, a gallery there this time? Yeah. So what I think you're talking about is there is a, a budding artist um, competition where people of almost any age can drop off their art and it will be judged um, with a panel of you know local judges. Mm -hmm. And then it'll also be up for viewing for all of the like um, the, the people attending the Rose Arts Festival. Uh, I think that's what you're meaning. There's, of course, there's artwork everywhere. Like every piece of available surface is covered by some local artist. I know that, that a lot of um, local artists will have art installations around downtown as well, that some of them are pretty consistent. I don't know if you've driven through Norwich recently. There's like three beautiful murals that have gone up in the past couple of years. Oh, wow. So, I mean, they're gorgeous, huge, like sides of those old brick buildings. It's beautiful. And I think that's what I think this Rose Arts Festival is doing is it's making art the focus. I mean, every town you drive through, when there's something interesting on the walls or on the on the on the um, dividers on the road, there's just it just brings light and excitement to the town. You know, it's great. It uh, helps bring awareness to the importance of art as well. Yeah, for, for yes. those who don't normally immerse themselves in in art. <laughs> Yeah, it just makes everything more beautiful. And when things are beautiful, how yeah. can you not be more happy, you know? Yeah, and like you said, it helps vital uh, economic revitalization. Yeah, it's funny. I think a large part of like big cities, Chicago and New York, they put a lot of time and effort into beautifying their areas. And that makes a huge difference in crime and in, you know, the, the quality of life. And I think it's mm. often overlooked as things so simple, but art and music and these these ways that we bring people together for conversations about the art and the and the artists it's I just think it's a great way to bring the community together I think Norwich you know Norwich needs a little love we need a little bit of um community you know <laughs> yeah and music and arts and uh festivities are a great way to do that yeah yeah um parking is there going to be a lot of places for people to go parking or will that be yeah, so on the the Facebook site too maybe I don't know if they've addressed parking specifically. Last year when I attended, there were a ton of options. All of NFA is open for parking. Um, a lot of the, the churches and schools around the downtown area will have their parking lots open. And as far as I see, they're all free. Um, it's not as bad as it looks. Of course, if you're willing to walk a little bit, parking a bit farther away is always a good option. But uh, And it's right on the Chelsea Greens. So there's a bunch of different side roads around the area. It's not too bad. Parking was pretty pretty easy last year and i assume it'll be the same this year good yeah um so are you gonna let's talk about the musical um performances uh who's the headlining group so it's ripe they are our headliner they go on the main stage at 6 p.m they are the last people on the main stage um but on the main stage we have fleet nick bossy of the northern roots sophista funk taylor kelly uh, Lexi Weege and JJ Slater Big Band. <laughs> yes. I'm not familiar with all of these, but we do have a Spotify playlist for the Rose Arts Festival. Oh, cool. It has, I know, it's awesome. It has some of the, the highlights from all the bands. So I definitely recommend everyone go check out Spotify, Rose Arts Festival playlist. It's really a great idea. I thought it was awesome. You can kind of warm up before you go, you know? Excellent. That's a great way to uh, check out some new artists. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like they're all they're all small time. You know, they're not they're not playing at Fox Rose and Mohican Sun, but that doesn't mean they're not awesome. They're oh, they're I, people I'm that we can really with connect some. with. Oh, yeah, good, I'm, good, good. I'm familiar with a <laughs> few will... of them and they are awesome. Good, <laughs> and good, I can't good. wait. I, I not... can't wait to find the other ones I haven't heard. Exactly. And there's even more, like I said, with the downtown after dark before on Friday, and we've got tons more artists. Um, the after dark um, stages are the Harp and Dragon stage, Epicure, These Guys Brewing Company, Pie Hops, which is also known as Latin Quarters, 
and Strange Brew. So they all have, you know, two or three artists that night as well. So the music starts at 11 and goes to 12.30 a.m. the next day. So wow. there's always something to listen to, 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 to jam out to. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to being there on Saturday and probably even Friday night to get, catch some yes. live music. Definitely, All right, Sophia, definitely. thank you so much for taking some time with me. No, and thank uh, you. Ho this hope to great. see you down there. Hey, I'll be looking for you. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.